Hello, everybody. Welcome back. My name is Mike Lankford. I'm a producer, engineer, mixer based in Toronto, Canada. Welcome back to Let's Mix Live, where I live stream some mix sessions and Pro Tools, start to finish, kind of warts and all, showing you some production techniques, ways you can help, ways I can help you make your music sound better. Lots of different ways to get there. Not here to show you what you should do, but what you could do. Song we've been working on. It's a duo called Georgia Wonder. The song's called Siren. It's kind of a pop disco dancey tune. I like it. Reminded me of ABBA. Reminded me of Eurovision type stuff, which is on right now. Um, so I thought it'd be fun to work on. Where do I get these sessions from? There's a website called Cambridge Music Technology. Link is below if you're watching this on YouTube. They have tons of multi-track recordings there. Um, everything from folk to metal. So if you're a new mixer looking for stuff to work on, fantastic resource. If you're an experienced mixer and you're looking to branch out into other genres, fantastic resource for that as well. Um, again, Cambridge Music Technology, link below. If Let's hop in here. Let's hop in here. Hopefully the stream's going okay. I'm seeing an OBS. It's having a little bit of a hiccup, but we'll see if we can get through that. It's always something. All right, hopping over into Pro Tools. See it's buffering on YouTube. We'll see if it catches up. If not, we'll figure it out. I'm seeing yellow, I'm seeing green. All right, we're back. I think it's looking better again. All right, we're hopping into Pro Tools here. All I've done since last time, hope I didn't miss too much. The joys of technology. Um, all I've done since last time is bring back our one kilohertz test tone. So it's time for the disclaimer. Um, if you're, well, I imagine you're listening at home, but I recommend highly that your listening levels be conservative, um, be it on your studio monitors, your speakers, your headphones. Um, because you never know when I'm going to be doing some EQing, you might get some sweeping around. Don't want to have any damage happen to your gear or your ears. So be mindful of that. We're working on YouTube again. One second. Let's gotta check this on restream. Restream is good. Okay. Sorry about that. There's little technical things. Gemma's here. How's it going, Gemma? So, um, in case we missed it, I'll do the disclaimer again. Uh, when I'm sweeping around EQing, be mindful of your levels. It can be loud. I wouldn't want any damage to happen to your your uh, your monitors, your headphones, or your line array PA system you have in your basement. You know who you are. Um, so without further ado, I'm gonna check our one kilohertz test tone just to make sure my system's working. Three, two, one. Oh, it sounds good. That sounds good. Everyone likes that. All right, I'm just gonna make those inactive and hide those. Um, I still have my legible notes from last time. Usually they're not the best. Gemma's saying, doing good. How about you? I'm doing good. It's a beautiful day here in Toronto. I did some groceries this morning. I need to do a little bit of yard work after this. So I want I I wanted it to be hotter when we're when you're mowing the lawn and stuff like that. I want it to be hotter out. I could have done it earlier this morning. I said, you know what? It's been it was a long winter. It's been a long, it's been a long 2020, to say the least. We're still we're still in 2020 in a lot of ways. Um so you know I decided, you know what? I'm going to do the stream at 12 instead of 2 p.m. And uh, I can go do some yard work after this when it's hotter. Out. So um, I still have my notes here. I went through, is the bass real or synth? I think the bass is synth. Um, the, the drums are all samples and loops and stuff. I do want to replace the kick and the snare. Um, the vocals, there's a couple tracks in these sections here. Um, in, well, in the chorus and in the tag where there's stereo vocals there. I want to split those so that we can make the one vocal kind of the lead. Um, they sound, they do sound good, uh, but I want to split them. So instead of having them pan hard left and right, we can bring that more into the middle and maybe tune those up a little bit. Just depends. They sounded fine though. Um... There's some percussion stuff I want to bring in. I'll probably bring that in part three. We'll see where we get to today if we're doing any vocal prep. Um, and then the arrangement. I think that might be a thing too in part three when we might work on the arrangement. Because I think there's there's a there's a good number of chunks on here um, that I think we could tighten up the arrangement. The song is long. Even with the fade out, like seven minutes. Like we can probably get this down to to four or five or something like that. So that might be one of those things. That being said, if we get the song sounding pretty good, maybe one of the last sessions we work on this, we'll probably do three or four parts. Um, so maybe the last one, that's the one where we'll start slicing and dicing the arrangement. Um, and again, if you're, if you're a mixer, if you're a new mixer, especially, um, 
I subscribe to the ask for forgiveness instead of permission for some of these things. Because if you tell a band or ask a band, hey, um, what do you think of your arrangement of your song that you spent a long time on that you've all probably grown attached to and would have severe demoitis if I make any adjustments to the arrangement? If you ask them that, they'll probably say no. Or they'll probably ask you, what are you thinking? And if you don't hit it out of the park on your first try, they're going to think you're wrong. Sometimes, and if you're watching any of these, like sometimes it takes a few swings at something, like even a delay throw or an effect or something until you kind of find what you were looking for. Um, if you don't knock it out of the park on the first go, um, they're probably not going to give you a second swing at it. Um, so if you're going to do any changes like that, do it after the fact and kind of just half jokingly toss that potential grenade into the middle be like, Hey, you know, I was messing around with this. What do you think of this? If they hate it, then you just go back to a previous save. Um, if they love it, you're going to look like a genius and, um, yeah. And then you can move forward with it. And also to one to mention, uh, again, your job as a mixer is to not always, and there's a massive asterisk beside this. Your job as a mixer isn't to please the client, please the band. Your job is to sell the song. That's your end goal. Uh, so don't worry as much about um, their, e this is going to sound weird, don't worry about their ego as much as um, what do you think is going to help to sell the song better. If the song's arrangement's kind of wonk, um, maybe try to fix it later if you have a good idea. But that being said, you're you're putting a lot on the line if you are messing with an arrangement and you're just hired on as a mixer. But we all have our different paths. Don's here. How's it going, Don? All right. I don't know if I need to listen through this, the whole song again, but we'll listen up until maybe the bridge. Cause after that point, um, we're kind of just back. Katie's here. How's it going, Katie? Um, after the bridge, this is kind of a breakdown for a minute and then it's all just outro for the last two minutes. So again, the arrangement's good. It's all basically 16 bar chunks here, but there's a couple things in the beginning where we could cut those into eight bar chunks. And I think it, it would help move it along a little bit quicker. So let's uh, have a listen again. This is Georgia Wonder. The song's called Siren. I like it. It's going to have a quick listen and just kind of get back in the groove here. Oh, where we left off, this is basically faders at mix. There's no, whoa, there's no work done on the subgroups or like anything. I think I maybe have like one EQ on it somewhere. Yeah, on this, whatever that, that room was for the, the acoustic guitar. So there's a lot of lifting to do today. There's a lot of tracks, 59 tracks. So again, it's Georgia Wonder, Siren.
All right, that is more or less, that's the tune. And then there's a little breakdown with some whispery stuff in there. And then it goes back into the, the chorus section and kind of just kind of loops on that until the end. So Don saying, get your nose here. Uh, it's a great song. It is a great song. It is. It's, it's fun and it's simple. Although there's a lot going on in here. Um, it's pretty simple. What, what's actually happening between the act like the core of the drum groove the bass line um what those 12 string acoustics are doing which i think does a lot of the lifting these ones in here because it's like a lot of the songs just that that note and then it's just kind of changing vocal melodies over it you could, there's a lot of songwriters out there that could probably take a lesson from songs like that where they try to do too much and it's like, hey, if there's vocals, maybe let the vocalists kind of do the lifting instead of trying to make everything else do a bunch of stuff to make it interesting for the listener or so they think. Um, just have your, your chorus chord, sorry, have your, your um, supporting chords um, and then like your well, any words I'm looking for here, um, but just have your supporting chords and then have your vocal melody do all of the lifting and you're probably in way better shape. U2 is good at that. They made a joke about it. They made a joke. I can't remember who was in the band, but they made a joke in an interview. They said they're asking what the secret of their songs were. And they said, just make the verse and the chorus the same chords. And they're all laughing. And it's like, yeah, you know, if you can do that. So, all right. Um, what, what do I want to do? I'm going to just start getting into the nitty gritty here. I'm, I'm going to just, if I could press some buttons here, I'm going to go to what I think are our, pretty much our lead vocals for these three sections here. So we have, just we have that one and then we have these ones. I'm going to split this into mono because these are in stereo tracks. So I'm going to right click on this, split into mono. And now this is taking this track, dumped it into two down here. So I'm going to take that track. I'm going to make this inactive and hide it. I just want to listen to, let's rename these as well. Um, so we'll just call this 1A instead of having it left and right. And we'll call this 1B. Because what I want to do is, is have our lead vocal feel like it's more in the middle instead of it being so, so wide. So it still feels like we have one singer and then any other harmonies or doubles or anything like that, that's all supporting it. Okay, so what they've done... That's not one vocal, that's a couple vocals. So... That changes things because we can't really get in there and tune that. All right, so we're gonna, I'm just gonna back the truck up a little bit here. We're gonna bring back um, this vocal and we'll delete those two because now it no longer matters. You know, best laid plans sort of thing. Now it no longer matters. Let's go listen to this one as well. I'm assuming that one is in the same boat and rowing in the same direction. Yeah, that's that's like a stack of vocals, so we can't get in there and tune those either. So, all right, well, it's better to it's better to know now than not know later when we made time for it. So I'd rather know now and we don't need to make time for it. So that kind of is what it is. Um, there's a, there, we can definitely pan those vocals in to maybe uh, just kind of focus it a little bit more. I wish we did have a lead lead vocal in there, but way she goes. Not going to lose sleep over that one. Not with game, what is it? Game six tonight, Leafs versus Tampa Bay in Tampa Bay. Go Leafs, go. Whether you're religious or not, there's a lot of people praying to the hockey gods today. A lot of Leafs fans. Tampa's won twice the last two years. They're fine. 
They don't need to win again. All right, um, so that that is kind of that with the vocals. I'm going to go ahead and mute all these vocals, all these wonderful vocals here. Let's start digging in on the music. So it is what it is. Um, I'm going to mute all our guitars. I'm going to mute our acoustics. I'm going to mute our sound effects. There's like there's like uh, like environmental effects in here and stuff. There's like the sound of the ocean and the sea and wind. All right, so let's have a look at our drums here. I'm going to mute all our drums. It may look like I'm muting a lot of stuff, which I am. Um, but I just want to be able to get in there and mess around with stuff a little bit. So um, I haven't done anything to... Well, it's going to sound obvious. I haven't done anything to anything. Um, I have not done anything to our main two mix here. Uh, again, I'm going to bring up my fader so I can see what's happening on that. Um, the way to get at that this little tiny button over here. It's really fun teaching this in class because I'm like, no, it's the one to the right. No, it's like, it's right here. It's the one that's like seven pixels across and 15 down. Yeah, that one. Um, so bring this up. And then if you hit this red button here, that'll keep that always on top. Because if you select anything else, it'll replace it. Don's asking, so you can't edit stacked vocals? No, because it's all kind of, it's all kind of together. Um, imagine you had, um, clear acetate sheets and you drew on each of those and we're stacking those you can go into the layers but if you draw on the same one you can't really get into the different colors or different layers that you had there oh uh, that's a good analogy or not but um yeah no if it's all stacked and it's all printed together you can't get in there and get at it um, just like if all these acoustic guitars were all you know re-recorded down to one track you can't individually go in and affect stuff in that track after it's all committed to the track that it was recorded to butchering that but that's okay um just for health and safety reasons i'm gonna go ahead and just use our uh my rules for mixing uh no templated stuff but i can use presets so i'm gonna bring in a um the uh the, just the i try to use as many of the stock um pro tools effects as well um or plugins as well so i'm just gonna bring in the channel strip this is kind of based on the snare drum aggressive. I'm just going to use that for drums. Uh, my difference there. Oh, that one's a little bit. Yeah, no, that's kind of that's kind of good for um, two mix here. So let's put that on there. I'm going to put it in bypass. If I just hold command on my appropriately modestly priced um, Apple keyboard um, and click on it, I'll put it in bypass. That's when it's blue there. And let's have a look at our drums here. We'll start building that up a little bit. I kind of do want to bring in some other samples, um, but we'll see how that goes. Bass is going. Like, I don't mind. I, I just realized, too, I spent like the whole last episode in the headphones. Like, I don't like the tail on that. turn this up a little bit just give me a second here i'm gonna see before i just instantly go straight to my uh to using trigger and sampling stuff um let's see if we can get rid of the tail that's on there and the tails that kind of the boxiness that's on there pro tools it's gonna spin for a second Don says, K okay, understood, good analogy. Well, I think there was like four analogies in there. So it's that, that sound of that room. Just want to get rid of that a little bit. And then the attack. So we can just kind of soften the attack a little bit. Come on, Pro Tools. Oh, before I forget to save as, it's a new day. Mix prep. Six. And we can always bring a little more tail back in if we want it.
If you want super boofy sounding, we could put tons of attack on it. It sounded pretty good. Because I just want... Still working on it. All right, I can buy that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put another one of those. Just using the channel strip. Let's go ahead and use this for drums. We just want to tap this a little bit. We just want to kind of use it as a little bit of a way to check the speed of what's happening here. And then we can check our levels on our main mix output. Um, again, because we're planning on fading this out the Canadian coming out here. We're planning on fading this out, so we're running the whole mix to this main mix aux, and then running that to our master output here. So what I need to do is put that on this channel, because when we go to fade things out, we want to make sure that we um, don't have anything on this main output. We just want to fade the music out. So this one, we're hitting that one a little bit harder. I like to keep my, um, my peaks around minus 10, minus 15. So let's go back here. We'll bring this kick down just a touch. I'm just checking our levels on this fader over here, just kind of our master, like our super master output. We gotta go back and forth a little bit for a second. That's okay though. I'm sure someone at home is just like, use folders, hide stuff. It's easier. I'm sure it is, but I don't, I don't care that much. It's going to be okay. And if it's not okay, I'll, as, as things are going, going into the ditch, I'll say, you know what? Everyone was right. I was wrong. Don't let that snare. All right, I don't like that snare, so let's let's go ahead and uh, we're going to. So this is my way of marking if we're using any um, triggers and stuff. So I could bust this. I could bust this to another track, like use an aux and then put um, put it through a uh, trigger that way. Um, but if I need to make any uh, velocity changes, it's easier to just run off of, in my opinion, it's easier just to run that off of the um, off the actual track. So I'll uh, search for trigger because I can never remember where it's actually on this thing. So um, this thing being Pro Tools, let's go ahead and we'll just put that on there. What do you mean? The iLock is, that's how I'm using Pro Tools. I legit don't have my eye lock in right now because I used it yesterday at rehearsal. <laughs> I'm surprised it's even running. One second. Maybe I have an instance on here on the cloud, but usually Pro Tools won't even open up if I don't have my eye lock on. Funny. Funny things today. always something in case people are wondering this is a this is dry lock key i just have a piece of pink tape on there because there's a whole bunch of them around at one point so that was my way of people knowing that's my lock key so all your license servers are on there i'm surprised pro tools is even running right now i'm gonna go ahead and plug that in just like so i'm gonna try to open up trigger again that was a teachable moment for everybody including myself I'm really shocked it, it ran. All right, give me one second here. I just need to restart this. That's what today is. I, I'm, I try my best to be prepared. I really do. There's just always something. Blue light is on the iLock. Just restart Pro Tools here. 
Now I'm super curious how it was running Pro Tools without auth uh, authentication or authorization because like I need with rehearsal, if I'm using um, my Pro Tools rig at rehearsal, it's like I need to bring that stuff with me. So I need to constantly bring that back and forth because I don't trust the cloud. There we go. I don't trust the cloud to lead the I, my iLock um, Pro Tools authorization on it. Reason being, if something happens and you don't have internet or it cuts out, I've seen that have problems. So I prefer to use the iLock still. Also putting it on the computer, if your computer has a massive, you know, takes a massive dump or something like that, um, then you have problems again. So, all right. So we brought Trigger onto our snare track here. There's nothing loaded on here right now. Um, so let's go ahead. Let's go to our browser. We have those A and F snares still. Audition, yes, please. I'm liking that. That one's good. And this is all the kind of stuff from. Do I have a cross stick on here? So there's a bunch of snares on here. So I don't think any of those are what I want. There's like a, a Lin drum sample that I think would probably work pretty well. Um, triggers fantastic for um, triggering kick snares, toms especially. Uh, I subscribe to your drum sounds, only as good as your toms. That one's pretty good. That one's good. I like that one too. Just with like enough boof on it. Because the thing with some of the, the dancier stuff, you can have your snare sit up kind of where hand claps would be. Um, or you can you can have your snare drums have enough body where it sounds a little bit like a kick drum, if that makes sense. Because with four on the floor, the kick drum's kind of going the whole time. This is These are the times too when the band is sitting with you and you're going through all these sounds and they're like wondering what's happening because you're just listening to like, you can go through a lot of samples. That's for sure. Okay. It's got to bring this down a little bit. And we're just bringing up the like the the dynamics a little bit. So we kind of want it to, to hit pretty hard. That's not okay. That one might be the business. So you can listen to what the original one sounds like too. It's a big difference putting the one at a phase as well. I'm buying that. It's pretty loud. It's going to rebalance this. I'm just looking at the, the meters down here and it was kind of crushing it. So bring this one up. I 
Last thing I would do, because this that the um the curves on this first one here on the A and F snare, the A and F snare. I think we can get rid of a little bit of the tail on it. So. All right, might be able to buy that. So that's the original one. Let's put that through Pro Tools. It's gonna put that through our bus one and two for our drums. And we are crushing that now. So we just gotta rebalance that. This is just life for a little bit. I'm still able to see our meter over there as well, our main output. Start bringing some other stuff in here. Just gonna throw uh, some EQ on that. It sounds pretty good though. Again, this whole song, like you can kind of mix it with a hockey stick, Canadian reference, um, but you can kind of just put the faders up and a lot of it sounds pretty good. Like there's nothing that's like super oscillating. Don is awesome. You're so using the AF uh, for the song too. It's just, it sounds good. It's new as well. That's another thing. Sometimes you get new toys. You're like, yeah, let's do that. That's the best one. see how far I can get in headphones today because I did I think I did pretty good last time as well that's me though all right same thing I'm gonna uh duplicate this there's a kick drum thing I want to hear so we'll do that um, we'll throw a trigger on this as well. Sure, stereo, why not? Uh, where's my main rock kick? Because I have this, I have that in there. And I'm, I'm into that. I'm into that one. So pretty boofy. But that's not what we want. We just want the subs from this, pretty much. And we can probably tighten this one up a little bit too. Uh, I'll do this, this, and that. Don't want it to hit pretty hard. All right, let's see what we have in, over here. Cause 
there's things about that. It's kind of a gated loop. It's kind of cool. I'm going to call this, I'm going to make this a group. Call this kicks. Call this snares. That thing's moving along pretty good. Daniel's here. It says needs more 808. <laughs> we'll see where we can get to with with what's kind of here plus a couple. Buying a lot of that in the headphones, headphonely speaking. All right, there's a couple things we can look at here, EQ wise. Uh, again, I'm going to try to use this kind of stock Pro Tool stuff. I keep wanting to say stock Digi Design stuff, and it shows my age. Put some of the boxiness in here, usually 200 to 400 hertz. Some boxiness you can get rid of. All right, not doing what I usually do. Usually, usually don't grab for the uh, shelving EQs. So it goes the breakdown. Actually, I think I know where that is. I was just going to throw an EQ right on the, the everything channel for the drums, but... I'm, I'm liking this kind of congee thing going on here. Not sure you can hear that, but that's what I was wanting to get rid of there. Okay, there's a lot of a lot of good stuff happening there for me. Um, I'm gonna do one more thing here. I'm gonna duplicate our drum subgroup here. I'm just gonna keep everything with it. I'm going to mute the main one here. I'm going to call this one Master BB for back bus. Let's see if we can get some other energy happening out of this as well. Um, there's two ways to do it. You can just run all your stuff through it as like I'm doing right now. Or you can send just certain elements to it. There's a bunch of different ways to kind of get the desired effects we're looking for.
All right, for headphones, it's sounding all right over here. Pro Tools. I liked a lot of this bass too. There wasn't much I was thinking of doing to it. But I am curious. Yeah, there's not much happening. going to bring up the high pass just a little bit reason being just in case any of it's getting in the way of the kicks down there I'd rather the kicks move in the speakers and the bass on this and I'm going to duplicate this one as well what I said before, even though there's only one bass going um, into the bass subgroup, you never know where you're going to end up. So I'm just curious to throw Sans Amp on this. Does it sound great, Gennetta? Uh, when we win tonight, celebrate till next time. I, I, I hope so. Little old heart could barely take the last game. Starts with an S, there it is. Call this crew the basses. Dale says dark glass B7. I still haven't even loaded any of that stuff in yet. I bought, I think, two guitars, uh, parallax and dark glass, and I haven't installed any of it yet. I'm I am that person where I, I buy stuff and I'm like, cool. I'll just put that on the shelf and I will get back to that when I can. It's because they had that 50% off sale. That was the thing. Daniel says, Shay, I know, I am I am that person. Um, real talk, full disclosure, when I sold my Xbox 360, I would say 70% of the games I never played. I just, I bought them and I was like, yeah, I'll have time in my adult life to play these. And I just never got to it. Then I got an Xbox One and now I'm looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight games of 12. Yeah, 8 of 12 on my shelf, I have not played yet, which I really do want to play. Um, but it's a, it's the ratio is about the same. <laughs> what I mentioned too about some of the um, 
Don's laugh and Sam the same. Oh, it's just, it happens. You're like, yeah, I'll have time for this in some life at some point. Um, anyways, uh, back with some of the production stuff, things like this, like being as an engineer, being able to go through some of these things when you're wondering how you get some of these sounds, being able to go through multi-tracks is like being able to go through someone's journal or diary with like how, like what were they thinking? How did they get there? So <clears throat> sounds like this, you might not think to do this, but like it just, it adds so much. And I mentioned before of a lot of, um, especially a lot of the rock stuff I do and even metal stuff. Um, I usually have what I refer to as a passing note. So usually there's a key of the song. And when there's a key of the song, usually there's a note or two um, that can go through like the whole chorus. And I usually use strings or a high synth pad or something. And I'll just put that note in. So when the chorus hits, it just adds that extra little bit of height to the mix, a little bit of upper uh, frequencies that are there. It's really subtle. I always find if you can hear it, hear it, it's too loud. Um, but you should definitely feel it. You should definitely miss it once you've um, you've muted it. Same thing when it comes to like shakers and tambourines for percussion and stuff. I find during choruses, it's really easy. We're at the chorus. It's a party. Let's raise the energy level. Let's bring the you know bring the frequencies up a little bit in the the high region. So just a little shakers, tambourines. It's one of those things again when you hear it, it might be too loud. But if you mute it, usually you start missing all of that rhythmical glue that's there. So let's have a look here. I'm just I'm gonna I'm gonna rock the headphones as much as I can today. They're they're comfy. They're comfy, they sound good. by that and again this is all non-destructive so we can always undo it if i realize i'm making a mess messing around with things. Dance is totally uh, this kind of stuff was my jam back in the day and the song has it all. It yeah. It's a lot of a lot of tasty bits in here. Okay, so we got that one guitar there. Oh this is kind of the Reiki um chorusy like chorus modulation effect on it. I love that too. I'm into that. Is there another one? I don't think there's much I would do to that. I wonder if we can... Where's what I'm looking for here? Maybe, maybe not. Nope, that's way, way too over the top. Just looking for a little bit of movement on it. But that that's too much. I shouldn't be doing all this right now. I should be actually, you know, putting the, the song mix together, but it's my show. And I feel like messing around with this right now. All right, I'll get back to that. I might do some manual like automation on that. And what was this one? Oh, it was the rakes here. Okay, this one, we can probably thin that out a little bit. So let's go here. We'll just highlight those. We didn't go through and like finally clean up all these sections here. I think it's good enough for what we need to do. 
Let's just go ahead. Let's EQ on this. Are there better EQs? Maybe. Are there other EQs? Definitely. There's just some boxiness that's in there. Just hold option, drag that over. Change my mind. I know I added some more top end to that, but change my mind. All right, let's see what we have here from the full five and six category. I think that's. Okay, that's these ones. Daniel, if you're still here, that's all a chord. That's all one chord, each string kind of individually. Which is, it's cool and somewhat high risk, high reward. Because when it doesn't work, you're like, wow, you spent a long time doing that. But when it does work, you're like, that sounds pretty good. That sounds good. We can throw a delay on that as well. Like a nice like quarter note rolling delay would sound pretty cool on that. I'm gonna make a note. It says quarter quarter note rolling delay. I'll know exactly what it's talking about. Alright, so these Now this whole section here, we could bust this into another aux just so we have it and EQ it that way. Let's do that. So guitar notes, we'll just call it like that. That's a good, good word for it. Um, we still have a few buses left. I need to save one at least. Uh, for our throws. So we'll use 21, 22. I'm not going to do this because I don't, I'm going to, I'm going to save my buses. I'm going to be old bus saver. Logistics. The children will never know the pain mix engineers had to, to go through, even recording engineers when you're constantly running out of buses and and gear and stuff. But we know the joy of having tons of computer processing power so we can just use, put tons of effects on things and not worry about it. All right, I totally lost track of what I wanted to do there. Find that. Find that. Find that. It's not doing too much, but I'll buy that one too, just to keep it going. Tightens it up a little bit. There's a note in there.
I'm curious what the kick drum sounds like on my speakers. Because in the headphones, it sounds good, but I don't know how it could be over the top. And that that sitar could have the rolling quarter note delay on it as well. And what is this one? What's 15? It says Atmos. So I, I did identify it. Oh, it's this. That's kind of like the... I don't know if we need that. pretty good. Got an idea. I think what we could use in that. Maybe just a little bit of movement on this with flanger instead of having panning so we can just add a little bit of sauce that way. All right. More guitars. That sounds pretty good in headphones. Again, this, this kind of the 12 strings to me added a lot. Let's see if there's any funny business happening in here. There's like a low note in there, kind of in there. I don't know if we need it. Maybe we do. We do. It's still there. That was a hard edit. It's kind of zinging in the top end. It doesn't bug me though. Like that kind of stuff up there. Don's got to head out. Says have a great rest of your day. Have a great rest of your day, Don. Thanks for stopping by. Go, let's go. I'm just assuming everyone's cheering for Leafs tonight. And if you're not, I hope your team has fun and tries their best. All right, something in there. I'm thinning this out a lot, but there's a lot, there's a lot of stuff in this song. Okay. 
can buy that. That's kind of the higher one that's there. Have a look at our two bus compressors, see if it's all freaking out. It's freaking out a little bit. But that's what rebalancing is for. We'll just keep working away on this and then we'll rebalance after because we're still kind of listening to some of the sounds that are here. I'm going to skip over the special effects stuff because a lot of that's just like ocean and robo noises and stuff. Let's have a look uh, and start into some of our, our pads and synths here. Just going to go up here. Stay in the headphones. I'm just, I'm really going to go for it today. Um, this first tag here, I can, cause I can easily see where everything kind of is now. So a lot of the sounds are kind of stacked up on this tag section after the first chorus. And we'll get to the rest of them after. It's going to turn all this up. So I can hear it, and so you can hear it too. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, we're an hour in. Okay, I got, I have until... I need to stop saying that. I say I got a lot. Uh, I have until about 2 p.m. I need to get working on some other stuff. So with these pads, I'm just kind of, if there's any kind of like mids buildup that we don't need. Also, there's not a lot happening in the higher frequencies there, so. So again, with some of these sounds, you listen, you're like, there's not a lot happening in the lower frequencies, but there's still stuff happening down there. So if you don't need it, I always recommend just bring up your high pass until you start hearing it do something and then back it off a little bit. By that. That's pretty robot -y. Sounds good to me. I'm gonna go for the one the EQ from our first synth there. So now we're definitely missing some of the top end. Let's bring that back. Pro Tools. There we go. buy that well that's fun I'm just put an EQ on it because we can I should put a fair child on that because we can I know someone out there gets that joke
So just clean that up just a little bit. All right, I think that's kind of everything in that channel of tracks there. What is this? Fuzzy, I can use that one. All right, it's so just two more of these, then we can start rebalancing things a little bit. This pad. And then our strings. Don't need to be like super precious about all of this EQing. I know it's probably not popular opinion with some of the, some people out there, but um, just getting rid of some of the, the mid and low buildup that's probably going to happen. And that's got some whistling. All right, and this is all grouped together. I do believe it is. So we can go ahead and it's gonna bring all this stuff down. I'm just start bringing some of these up. So let's just go to this section in here. We had a lot of the synths that were there. That's most of it. Again, three bouncing, you can just bring all the faders up. And again, I'm a big fan of just pull everything down, push everything back up. Dina says, uh, got to join a work meeting and feign great enthusiasm. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Thanks for stopping by, Daniel. Hope things are going well. Hope we're getting some time outside too. It's a beautiful day here. All right, what's next? Uh, some of the some of this uh, special effects stuff. Let's have a look at it. What is this? That's some. Uh, we're out, outside by the ocean. I'm still gonna high and low pass a couple of these things just so that we. No, there's no funny business happening. buy that no what's all this oh this is all the breakdown bridgey stuff okay just says i finished watching later goalies appreciate putting that in the world
We'll buy that. Let's see if we can just let's just go for it. All special effects. Yeah, because it's just kind of this stuff. I think it'll be okay. If it's not, you can blame me. Okay, so we've got everything, sorry, we have everything uh, more or less uh, with the BQ on it. We haven't gotten into the vocals, we're just going to leave those for now. I'm going to do that for my own sanity. We're still just doing some mix prep stuff. We can't do any vocal prep because they're all stacked and kind of printed, which is fine. I am going to hop into the headphones for a few minutes. I do want to have a listen on my speakers just to make sure nothing's going completely bonkers so be right back
Okay. So, just did some rebalancing. There's a sound in this track over here. That kick drum that's in there. It's kind of a knocking sound. And that's what I'm trying to get not happening in the song because I find I'm listening on my headphones, my Bear Dynamic 990 DTs open back, butchered what that's called probably, um, my NS10 uh, studio monitors, and also have a little uh, USB Altic Lansing speaker as well. And I was really hearing that knocking sound on the Altic Lansing speaker. So it's the kick drum from this loop. I like the. I like the sound of the congos and stuff that's in there, like the kind of percussion stuff that's in there. But I can't kind of isolate that. And I'm sure someone at home can, but I can't right now. So I can maybe leave that for later. But I want to make sure the drums are up and my gauge is like, if I can hear the drums and still hear everything underneath it, usually the drums are in good, good shape. I can hear the bass nice and loud too, which is great. And overall, it sounds pretty decent. All we've done so far is uh, we just have a little bit of compression, but we're just kind of we're just kind of tapping this. Like we haven't added our saturation or anything else so far. Um, I'm gonna hop into this, the headphones for a little bit longer. I'm gonna mess around with the vocals for a bit because we're kind of tied into what the vocals are doing because they're printed so i can't really get in there and tune anything or prep anything so i might as well just kind of listen through and see if there's any eq stuff i want to do and start mixing that stuff in then we can put our our delays and reverbs together and maybe work on that and we'll see where we are by um by 2 p.m so again I have some yard work to do today i wanted to make sure it was hot as possible to go out and do that be right back Just give in, there's no getting away from me. Just give in, there's no getting away from me. Just give in, there's no getting away from me. Just give in, there's no getting away from me. Just give in. There's no getting away from me. Just give in. There's no getting away from me. Such a perfect night. Sailing to my light. Take my hand. There's nothing you can say to me. When you hear my voice, then you have no choice. Just give in, there's no getting away from me. Just give in, there's no getting away from me. So just a couple of spots where I'm just carving out... Again, there's always high frequencies that bug me. You can always add that stuff back in. It's not a big deal. Um, but I did want to mention um, they sound compressed. They sound processed already. So there's not much lifting to do. Normally what I do is throw an 1176 on there, um, start stomping on it with a limiter and kind of reel it in that way. But there's, there's not a lot of room to move with it and just 
So we don't need to keep hammering it if it's already flat enough that way. But the vocal sounds good. Vocal sounds great. The quality of the performance for sure sounds awesome. So just a little bit of explanation of what I'm doing here. Just give in. There's no getting away. Just give in. There's no getting away from me. Such a perfect night. Sailing to just give in. There's no getting away from me. Such a perfect night. Just give in. There's no getting away from me. Just give in. There's no getting away from me. Just give in. There's no getting away from me. Just give in. There's no getting away from me. Just give in. There's no getting away from me. Just give in. There's no getting away from me. Just give in. There's no getting away from me. Just give in. There's no getting away from me. Such a pop. Just give in. There's no getting away from me. Such a pop. Just give in. There's no getting away from me. Just give in. There's no getting away from me. Just give in. There's no getting away from me. Such a pop. Just give in. There's no getting away from me. Just give in. There's no getting away from me. Just give in. There's no getting. Just give in. There's no getting away from Just give in. There's no getting away from me. Just give in. But I tell no lies. I see your future in my eyes. I promise you a love so deep. You hear me calling in your sleep. Who needs to breathe the air above? When we're both drowning in my The tides have turned Don't be afraid You're not
Okay, overall, it's one of those things where I'm going to sleep on that. When I'm, when I wake up, it will be Monday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, but this track here, there's a little, there's a little thing here I just wanted to point out. That, that getting into the H there for help. This. A little kind of node there. Things like that, that jumps out at me. I always think um, when we're editing too, we're trying to find things that are distracting. That's distracting for me. So I'm going to go through and chop all those off. And should the band or artist say, you know what? That's my favorite part of the song. That little thing there. We can always go back. We have those all playlisted, so we can always go back in time. Maybe we soften that with a little bit of fade. That I like that. Much better. Much better than than this. If I could just teach a moment. We're just softening that H sound there. So we'll do this and we'll just kind of do that. It'll fade. I like that. We could copy and paste and just drag it around. But I'm just going to go and manually do these. Again, just some editing, cleaning up stuff. It may not be bugging everybody. It's bugging me. That's one of the things with mixers too. There's just there's lots of different things that could jump out at somebody or what they're focusing on. Okay, there's not too many. Let's see if we can fly those. I think they're all kind of copy paste. Um, flying is another another term for copying and pasting. So we have our chorus here. I'll just because we have it all. Um, this the tempo is one thirteen. They did say that in the README file. Um, and because we have our markers in here, I can just go to the top of the tag, go over here, and I'm just gonna paste. Now, my thing is just kind of keep an eye on if anything, like, seriously moves. But when you're looking at what we're copying and pasting over, all of the little um, what you call it. All the transients, all the waveforms there, that all looks pretty much the same. And you can always zoom right into if you're curious. Because it should be Yeah, it's identical. So we can we can um, assume we can go with the assumption that that's all flown, that's all copy and pasted. So quick way to do that. So we did the first one. So that's going to help, I think. If it doesn't, I've been wrong before. Um, so yeah, notice this little things like that when you're when you're listening. That's why I think fresh ears is important too uh, when you're listening the next day. Um, I highly recommend, like even if you think you're done your mix, listen the next morning because you might kind of tweak a, another couple things. So um, yeah, always just listening for things that are jumping at you. But the vocal, like the vocal quality of the singer, I love it. Um, and the uh, the... Delivery is great too, so. I wish we had like clear leads on all the uh, choruses too, but not worrying about it. Again, nothing happened on the mix bus here. We haven't added our saturation. We haven't added any of this kind of special sauce to make it do stuff yet. It's just really, really good recording. Really well recorded song. I know there's processing going on already, but like, because I'm wearing one, hats off to the engineer on this one. Often wearing multiple hats as well. Producers, mixers, engineers, often wearing multiple hats. I want to figure out there's something we can do on this one here 
do something on this one here. There's just something we can do to that to kind of make it stand out. So I tried to make it a little bit narrower. So when more narrow, narrower. So when we go to the uh, the come to me part, that's wider, and then that one can focus. The second part can focus in. That's the theory, at least. Okay, we're we're getting about that time here. I'm just gonna do a couple more things before we get going. I have 14 minutes on my clock here. I said I was be done by two, but I started five minutes late because life always. So um, let's go ahead and add some more effects in here. Uh, again, if you've been following along, I do my effects in mono. And uh, like my oxes, I do my oxes in mono. My go to delay short. That just looked really wrong. And then delay long. I'm going to put the vowel in. I'm going to go for vowels today. And then a reverb. And what I do. So again, templates I can't use, but presets I can use. Um, let's use some stock Pro Tools stuff, so Modulate 3. Um, what I like to do is put stereo effects on the mono auxes. That way it only takes one aux to send over to it, but we can do some stereo effects using that instead of using two auxes to send stuff over to a stereo effect. If that doesn't make any sense to you, that's okay. Might not make some sense to people with lots of experience too, but uh, that's just how I work. Um, also, coming from like a Pro Tools LA rig, sorry, LA rig. Um, it's my accent showing again. Pro Tools LE limited edition, which I think uh, stands for um, not able to use all the stuff that HD had. Um, so we only had so many tracks and auxes and stuff we could work with. So I'm lost in my inserts here there we go uh and then our reverb i've been i've been liking lustrous plates that's the one thing that's not been um deverb deverb on pro tools is fine you can definitely get away with it a lot of things um i do believe dave Fonsato still uses it quite a bit um at least it was but, uh, excellent resource too if you're if you're not hip to that uh, dave Pensato he's had Pensato's place and i think it was Pensato's corner something like that where he's given away uh lots of advice I don't want to say tips, but lots of advice on things that you're doing for his mixes and stuff like that. I think he's using D-verb for like a lot of things, and that probably freaks some people out because there's lots of great reverbs out there. But, you know, you start getting your templates together and you don't really worry about it too much. All right, so we have our reverbs and our uh, delays here. So we're just going to run those ones. So again, we need to run that into our main mix here. So our output from these ones need to go into main mix. And then our main mix goes into our master fader here. So when we do our big fader at the end, we can still keep our mix bus compressor and all our effects and stuff. Those are all going to be not affected, but our main fade out is just on the master fader there. So that's looking good. All that's going to main mix. Very rare occasion. I decide to name my aux buses and sends. So my go-to for delay short is bus nine, bus 10 for the longer delay and bus 11 for our reverb there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and, hmm, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna, um, I usually time my reverbs off my snare, but I kind of want a crazy long snare reverb on this. So go to our snare channel here. Let's go to the, the, the snare that, the snare that came in the box here. Um, and I usually run at nine, 10, 11. It's kind of my go-to. So I'll bring up bus 11 here, crank that all the way up. That is large. Remember to, um, again, with your auxes, put them in solo safe. So in, on a, a well-priced um, Mac keyboard, just hold command and click the solo. That makes it so if we, we soloed our snare right now, just wanna make sure that when we solo our snare, sorry, Wrong channel. If this is not in solo safe, we won't hear everything else that is soloed as well. So it's kind of always in solo. Probably butchered that. That's okay. My show. I'm just kind of going through here. I'm not precious about these things either. I'm liking that. Now 
Now what I'm listening for, it's kind of hear the reverb tail kind of naturally and gracefully trail off. Pro Tools. Change this no problem later on. Now let's have a listen what it sounds like on our vocal here. Hate it on the vocal. I buy that. Just because we're here, let's mess around with the um, vocals. Sorry, the um, delays on the vocals. Now this is where it's nice because we do have the song actually timed, like the BPM, the beats per minute. Um, so We could probably get away with something. 41's too much. 41 is way too much. There we go. And we can unlink those. This can make a big difference too. Such a perfect night. Now you might want to put a EQ in behind that just to get rid of some of the top end. And what's on there might be a little too quick right now, but we're just playing around with it. That could be fun, the quarter note. I know I talked about it before. Wrong fader. Yeah, that rolling quarter is pretty cool. So we'll play around with the feedback, which is how many delays we hear, how many echoes we hear, but just getting it set up. I like effects. What can I say? Mm. 
That one for sure. Just chaos right now with the amount of facts going on. We'll get back there later. I'm just going to leave that chaotic EQ on that for now. Such a perfect night, to my Take my hand. There's nothing you can say to me. When you hear my voice, then you have no Oh, I meant to mention too, I was messing with the tuning on the triggered snare. It's pretty low now. I mentioned before too, with some of the dancier stuff, I think it's good when the kick drum and the snare drum kind of, not say take up the same space, but they just kind of complement each other a lot. So they're both kind of low, but the top end of the snare just kind of, just kind of adds a little bit of top end crunch to it. Because you can always tune it back up later. It's coming together pretty good. That's my opinion, though. I, I'm completely biased. So. Gonna hop out one more second. So I added a pretty quick slap delay on the hi-hat there. Just to get a little, little bit more energy, a little more movement. So we can always mute it, but when we bring it back, So that could help in the chorus too, just to open up. We can automate that pretty easily. So, And because of the automation, it's gonna happen, I'm pointing at the screen like you can see me, it's gonna happen on the hi-hat track. So we're still gonna get the tail once we mute it again. Sometimes it works, sometimes it does not work, but for the most part, I think it's sounding pretty good. I think that's been two hours. Yeah, it's two hours and 40.
three seconds right now. Um, I'm happy with my progress today on this. I'm just going to externalize my thoughts a little bit. I'm happy with the progress. We did some rebalancing. We went through all the tracks, uh, did a little bit of EQing. Again, the engineering, I think, was great on this. So there wasn't a lot of, in my opinion, there's not a lot of times where I'm like, yeah, let's start compressing that. Um, that's just the those vocals that are down there. That's all this kind of bridgey section. I do know that. We will get there. Um, went through all the tracks. It's me queuing a lot of uh, high pass filtering, which is getting rid of the, any sub stuff, any low frequencies that might be mudding things up. Carved out some mids. Um, looked at the vocals. Oh, we did rebalancing on the drums and all the instrumentation. Sounded pretty good here. Again, I'm listening on my headphones, uh, my Anis Tens, and <clears throat> excuse me, this little Altec Lansing USB speaker as well. Uh, Bluetooth USB speaker. And um, yeah, I looked at the vocals. Vocals are sounding good to me. We couldn't separate the stereo tracks because they're printed with like a bunch of making a bunch of uh, tracks all together. So those are all printed together. So we couldn't get into like the individual um, vocals for those. So we could, there's no prep we can really do. As far as tuning, we could time stuff, but it's sounding good. So we're just going to roll with it. Again, sometimes what you got to work with is what you got to work with. Um, we added some effects here. Just our channels, just bringing those in. So again, our short delay, long delay, and our main reverb we're going to be using. I do have notes for a couple of vocal throws as well. So I'm not just going to, um, well, probably not. We never know the way life works and the way I work. Um, probably not just going to turn up the aux on uh, the effects and just let it run. There's definitely some spots at the end of this, the verses where we could do some delay throws. So we'll probably work on those. As far as next times... Next time, singular today, um, we'll do some work on our main mix, uh, main mix bus, our main two bus here. So all we have this little, uh, basically a little bit of a, a traffic cop here for uh, for levels. So, um, so we'll work on our our mix bus uh, compression. We'll work on our mix bus EQ, some saturation, um, probably tape simulator, something like that. Throw some EQ on there, some Golf Foss on there, some L2 on there. We'll see what it sounds like. It's been sound sounded pretty good so far. So see how that goes. Just need to check one thing here. Things been checked. All right, as always, just gonna finish this up here. I think an hour and a half, two hours is good. If you don't if you think that's too long or too short, you put that in the comments below on YouTube. Um shift command U, shift command B. Get rid of any unused regions in the song. And as always, if it doesn't exist in two places, it doesn't exist at all. So save, copy in all audio files is what we want to do. Let's go to a little temp back up here. Temp back up here. I just say BU underscore. So now it's a backup mix prep. Hit save. That's backing up in the background. Conveniently enough. All right, that's my time for today. It's time for today. Got some yard work to do. For anyone that's wondering, yes, I do use sunscreen. Just asked a question. I was actually questioned by a couple different people lately. And I was just like, yeah, I need sunscreen. I burn. Skin burns. Although it's a lot hotter now than it was when I was growing up. I will say that. I feel like the sun is a lot hotter if we want to go down that path. I mean, that's more. Maybe that's more a chat for the... My gaming channel, shameless pug. Um, Katie's saying, uh, have a great rest of your day, Mike. Thanks for the stream. Thanks for thanks for hanging out, Katie. Hope you enjoyed the stream. Hope you enjoyed the song. Hope everyone's knees are okay from all the dancing from this song. I don't dance, but I do like I do like the dancing stuff. I think it's pretty good. It moves people. That's why we get into music. To move people, brackets, manipulate emotions. So, um, again, the song I'm working on today, the duo is called Georgia Wonder. The song is called Siren. Where do I find these songs? Uh, there's a website. It's like I was thinking, like, where do I find these songs? Uh, there's a website called Cambridge Music Technology. Link is down below if you're watching on YouTube. Tons of multi-tracks there. Highly recommend checking into that, especially if you are a new mixer and also if you're an experienced mixer. Tons of genres on there, folk to metal. It's all great. I'll be back here Monday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you're a hockey fan, uh, please send your positive vibes to the hockey gods for Maple Leafs today so they can get out of the first round for like the first time in forever so alright I think uh, this might be starting to have a hiccup again in OBS tis what it is today once again my name is Mike Lankford engineer producer mixer based in Toronto Canada it's been Let's Mix Live or I live stream some mix sessions showing you start to finish how you can hopefully make your music sound better as well again I'm not here to show you what you should do but what you could do thanks for watching 
Talk to you later.